Welcome everyone to Samuel Taps Online. On this video, I'm going to actually share with you techniques that you can use to become innovative and come up with ways that will help you to be productive and efficient. So join with me as I'm going to share with you ways in which you can be productive and your work can be very, very impressive. So we are going to work on Microsoft Excel and tackle all the things that you need to know so that you are a very good user of Microsoft Excel. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, click subscribe and also like and share so that other people can also learn from what you have learned today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for actually tuning in. We are looking at how can you actually take a Microsoft Excel graph and put it on Microsoft PowerPoint so that you avoid the issue of copying it there and pasting it here because that doing that you cannot actually interpret the data or modify it the way you want to modify so let's look at how we can start doing it when i open powerpoint like i did now when you click insert on the tools of powerpoint you can actually create a graph from the tools here as you see chart so when i click here i get different charts that i can use so i can use the chart that we normally come across when we start to create charts which is a column graph i click column graph and i click ok so what microsoft powerpoint will do is to create a microsoft excel spreadsheet as you see here at the bottom and then uh, let me just drag it up a bit and at the back of it you can see that there is a graph that came as an example so the example that we see here now let's assume that you want to modify the graph by actually looking at the spreadsheet and make changes according to your preference and obviously you are expecting what is happening here at the back or what you see at the back to change according to what you're changing there so let's say that we are maybe we're analyzing the previous years uh, comparing it with other places so we'll use different campuses so let's start here where it says series one obviously we see series one on the graph there so if i go to series one and type 20 22 and I, and come here and say 20 23 and come this side where it says series three and say 20 24 so look at what happens on the graph there it also updates as what i'm typing there so if i come here now i want to compare different places or campuses I will say middle back and then when I go pressing enter to go to the next place there obviously where it says a uh, category 2 then now I change and say waterfall oven and when I press enter and then I can say middle back okay let me middle back I have a uh, CN Matlangu now as i'm doing this you can actually see that at the bottom or at the back of my spreadsheet that came as i opened the chart i didn't open the separate spreadsheet separately it updates automatically with the things that i'm typing so if maybe i add again there and say bonusangomo bonusangomo and then let me modify by adjusting my columns you can see that bonusangomo is there now if i want to add another one and say weed bank if i say weed bank weed bank will be a new one you see there it comes now weed bank doesn't have values so i'm going to add values and say 3.5 and then i move for 2023 and say 3 uh, 4.8 and i move for 2024 and then i say 5. now you can see that even weed bank has information that comes with it there you see so anything that you do on the graph if you modify the graph it uh, updates automatically on the slide so if i have another um um year or a semester to compare let me say um for an example 20 as an example 2024 um dash s2 uh, it's an example that i'm using s2 for semester two then now i come there it means that I'm expecting a new data series uh, in the legend. I'm expecting uh, something to indicate that there's a new data series that will come. So you can see that there is 2024 semester two. So, but now it has to show on the graph. For it, for it to show on the graph, I will have to give it values. So if I say 
then I go for the next campus I say 2,5 then I go to the next campus I say 2,8 and then I go again and I say 4,7 and then I go to it bank and I say 3,6. So what happens? There's a goldish data series that comes which represents 2024 semester 2. So what happened here? I didn't open Excel separately and create a graph and come and paste it here because I won't be able to do the modification that I'm doing that will update automatically to my slide. That is actually the reason why you have to use uh, Microsoft Excel within Microsoft PowerPoint. So now what do I do? I can close this if I'm satisfied. So meaning that I'm accepting the graph as it is. So but now the graph is actually messy a little bit because at the back you still have information as if you are editing the subtitle and the and the title and so on. So I want to have a clean slide but only the graph here. So on the left hand side where you see the actual slide, you right click there and you go to layout and you click blank slide meaning that it will only be the graph that shows you can see now it's clean here the graph is the only one that remains there so that is how actually it is and i don't have information that is there that actually uh, messes up my my slide then i can actually change the title here and give it a title that relates to what i'm talking about here so if i say results for maybe for four years you see uh, it's an example that i'm using results for for previous four years yeah previous previous four years and um, comparing to this year or something like that so so now this is what you can do remember that whatever you type you can even edit like modify it to be a, a certain type of font and a font size if you want to do that make it bold but now only on the titles and other things but uh, the titles x x exit titles y exit titles and the chat title but when it comes to information within the graph you cannot uh, uh, change the font unless if you created a uh, something like an additional text box or so or something like that so this is how you actually make it simple for you to interpret information coming from any tables anywhere but you use powerpoint without copying it somewhere where it comes from pasting it there you modify as you are working thank you for watching please like share comment and also make sure that you subscribe so that you can even make people aware that they can learn something as you have learned today thank you